Grace and Peace. I'm Pastor Seth, and I welcome you to Aloha Friday in the Pastor Study. This past few weeks we've been reading through Revelation, and this week we're going to read Revelation 20. But before I do that, I want to read 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. I'm going to read these verses because I want you to remember these verses as you read chapter 20 of Revelation. Peter writes, But do not forget this one thing. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. What I would like you to keep in mind is that a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. And two, the Lord is patient because he wants everyone to be saved. So with that, let us read Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead, were the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. This is the word of the Lord. Revelation 20 is a little controversial in the church. Perhaps you don't realize it, but there are three main views on Revelation 20, and they kind of revolve around how to interpret the thousand-year reign that we read about. Now, to summarize, we have the premillennials, the postmillennials, and the amillennials. And you know what? I'm not going to talk about any of them. I'm going to take that debate and I'm going to set it aside. Because what I want to focus on is the thousand years in context of what we read from Second Peter. Remember, a thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. In early Christian thought, and even with Jewish thought, when it came to religious texts, a day and a thousand years were equal to each other. So when we read about the thousand years of Christ, 
This is synonymous with another term that we read about in the Bible, and that is the day of the Lord, or put a different way, the Lord's day. Now, if you've been going for church for a long time, you probably heard Sunday described as the Sabbath day or also as the Lord's day. This is no coincidence. The first Sabbath day, the first Lord's day, we read about in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. This is the seventh day of creation. For six days God worked to create everything that existed, and on the seventh day he rested. This day was special. This was the Lord's day, a day on which God rested. Unfortunately, the fall ruined that Lord's day and kick-started all of history. Now in Revelation 21 and 22, we're going to read about the end of the story, which is a restoration of the Lord's day. Another Sabbath day that we read about at the very beginning. But in the middle of all of history, Bible and our lives, there are numerous little Lord's days. Days of judgment, days of rescue. Some examples of these include the Passover, the first Passover when the Jews were rescued out of Egypt. On the other hand, another Lord's Day was when God sent the Assyrians and the Babylonians to conquer Israel and Judah. Lord's Day also is a day of judgment. And just because you're one of God's people doesn't mean that you are free of judgment. However, God's judgment is discipline. God's patience is working for our salvation. Everything that happens, all these little Lord's days, whether it's to free us or to discipline us, has one purpose, to save us, to bring us to repentance and into God's kingdom. So when you read about the thousand years in chapter 20, whether you're pre-millennial or post-millennial or all-millennial or something else, I hope this gives you a deeper understanding of what those thousand years means. It's the day of the Lord, a Lord's day, a day of freedom and judgment, a day of turning darkness into light, and ultimately it is leading into the Lord's day, the final Sabbath that will last forever and ever. Until next time, my friends, God bless you.